So hello, right, so today we're going to do a chicken and bacon and mushroom potato pie. Um, you can pretty, pretty much put in whatever you like in this. I've just um, got a few things here that I'll be putting in. I'll talk you through it, rough prices, and then once that's done, I may even do a treacle pudding today. Not a treacle, a syrup sponge, a steamed syrup sponge. So we'll start off with um, saying what we need here. So obviously, being chicken, we need chicken. So I've got a kilogram of chicken, five pound in all these. Bacon, two pound fifty for a twin pack. I'll be using seven rashes of that. I've got, I'll be using probably about a pint of milk. Um, some plain flour, eight or so mushrooms, one decent sized onion or two small ones, a little bit of thyme, some sweet corn. I've got two and a half kilos of red potatoes here. Maris paid pipers work well as well. These in all these at the moment are £1.9. So. And I've got some frozen leeks here. You can get most frozen veg from most stores for like 70p to a pound. Um, so let's get started okay so i'm going to start prepping the veg because i want the mushrooms quite chunky so i'm going to cut them quite chunky so i'll probably cut them into three or four and then same again the other way so that kind of size they do shrink as well when you cook them being mushrooms and onions are going to be quite chunky as well so It is a nice, especially as it's getting colder now, it's one of those meals that is uh, quite hearty and warming when it's really cold outside. I'll have stews and casseroles coming up soon as well. So I'm going to take all that off. So again, I want these relatively chunky as well, so it's quite a nice size. Okay, so I've prepped my chicken. It's quite a decent size, probably about one and a half, two inches. Onions all prepped, mushrooms and bacon. Forgot to mention two chicken stock cubes. Chicken stock cubes and everything for me. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna season the, the chicken with a bit of black pepper and chuck some thyme on it. Okay, so in my chicken, I'm going to put some black pepper. And probably about a teaspoon of thyme. Bearing in mind I've got quite a bit of chicken here. I've got um, a kilo. But I don't want too much because it will overpower. Okay, now I'm just going to mix all that in. I'll scrape some fry light in there as well. Give that a good mix. I've also put peeled my potatoes and got them on to boil as well. So hopefully, if all goes well, it'll uh, all be up together at the same time, all ready to go. I'm going to leave that to sit for a couple of minutes. Okay, so it's nearly all sealed off now. Whilst that was cooking, I made a pint of stock. Ready for in a bit when we're going to need that. So once it is all sealed, you're going to want to scoop out all that chicken. So again, it's not cooked all the way through because I want it to cook in the sauce. It helps it stop going so chewy, as I said before. Nothing worse than chewy chicken. 
and this is a kilogram of chicken I got from all these today. Alright, so once the majority, once it's all white on the outside, we can then scoop this out. Leaving that juice behind, there's going to be a lot of flavours in there. Okay, so once all the bacon's cooked, we'll add, add the onions. It's going to give us a nice base to make our sauce as well. So the potatoes are boiling away merrily. That'll be about 15 minutes. This is still on high heat, by the way. Smells delicious. So once you're happy that your bacon's all ready to go, we're going to leave that in there and we're going to add the onion. And I'm going to use frozen beef, veg, or leeks, or whatever like I've got here, by all means. I think you might. Frozen veg is just as good as fresh anyway because it's frozen pretty much when it's cut and prepped. So it's got just as many nutrients and stuff in. That will do. I'm going to give that a couple of minutes to cook. Right, so now it's all pretty much soft. There's a lot of juice in there. So what I'm going to do is chuck in my mushrooms and that will help absorb some of the juice. And then whatever's left will make a stop add a bit of flour to make a stock with. Or well, the base of a stock anyway. Okay, so that's all cooked out pretty nicely now. So what I'm gonna do is take it off the heat as we did before and add some plain flour. Again, to make it all bread crummy. A couple of tablespoons should do it, so it goes, and that'll absorb, and then it'll all go bread crummy. So it's beginning to go all bread crummy there. I've got to add a little bit more. It's not quite enough. There's still quite a bit of liquid in there. But all that flavour that we've put in is still in there, so it makes it really quite tasty. Okay, so I've made a point of chicken stock up using the Oxo cubes. Okay, so it's all going gloopy now. So as that heats with the stock, that will thicken up. So I shouldn't have need for corn flour. So I've probably used about four or five tablespoons, I had so much juice in it. Okay, so now that's done, I'm just going to add the stock. So I've got a pint of stock here. And before it starts boiling, you want to add about half a pint of milk. Then 
has that boil so that will thicken up quite nicely again if it does end up going too thin so with enough flouring to start you can always use corn flour if you want to thicken it up so at this point you probably want to put your oven on to about 180 degrees the potatoes are nearly ready now they'll be a few minutes so i'll mash them in a minute and then we're good to go 15 minutes in the oven this has got to be one of the longer meals that i do to be fair um but at the, at the end of the day it's worth it it tastes amazing comfort food we love it so I'm beginning to thicken up a bit now. So once it starts beginning to thicken up, put in your chicken. Black like salt. And at this point, if you want to add your sweet corn, you can do that as well. I mean, you don't have to put sweet corn in, you can put in pretty much whatever you like. Peppers, onions, mushrooms, sweet corn, leeks. Carrot, why not? I've got a small tin of sweet corn here. But the good thing about adding these extras is it makes it spread a bit further as well. And the goodness that's in there, pretty healthy meal, if I do say so myself. As you can see, it's really beginning to thicken up. Probably take about five to ten minutes to finish cooking out the chicken to thicken up I'll show you once that's done uh, uh, during that time I'll mash my potatoes as well yeah so the potatoes are ready there so I've got it back on the heat although there's no water in there because it helps dry out the potatoes it stops it being so gloopy so I'll just use a wooden spoon to break them up a little bit the only heat that's left is in the thing. If, you haven't, if you've only got a gas cut stove, you can still do this, but you just need to turn it on a really low heat and just keep it moving. And that helps dry out any extra water that you couldn't start strain out. And then we'll just mash it with some milk and some butter. But I don't want it too slimy because it's got to be quite firm to sit on top of the pie. So, there we go. So, you can see. It's all going quite dried out there, which is ideal. Yeah, it just helps get out that excess water. And the chicken is actually cooking quite nice now. It's, as you can see, it's getting quite thick. Still got another five minutes or so to go. Okay, so if it's been cooking away and it's not as thick as you'd like it, Mine's slightly too thin, I want it a bit thicker than that. So what I'm gonna do is just mix up a little bit of corn flour with some milk. Probably a tablespoon or two. About a tablespoon, I would say. Start off small. With a little bit of cold milk. Make sure it's good. It's all mixed up. Don't let go in lumpy. To be fair, it's not far off, but I do like it a bit thicker than that. So, in comes the corn flour. So I've mixed it up with some milk, and I'm just going to add that in. And that won't take long now to finish off. My potatoes are all mashed out. Oh, look at that, beautiful. The magic of corn flour. Because the problem is if it's too runny with this dish, it'll all, the potato will fall through, which you don't want. Look at the difference. For a couple of minutes and that'll be cooked out. To, if you're not too sure that your chicken's gonna be cooked, just take a piece out, cut it in half. Obviously if it's all white, it's all good. But then it is going to be cooking in the oven for another 15 minutes anyway, 20 minutes. So, so that's lovely and thick now. So 
Again, if it's still not quite as thick as you'd want it, you can always add a bit more corn flour. Obviously, mix it with cold milk first. So I just put corn flour and it goes all lumpy. And it don't do anything. But that is quite thick now. Do me to be fair. It's looking good. Have a taste. Make sure you're happy with it before you pour it. If not, add a bit of seasoning. So this is going to be poured in like so. Yes, my darling. So there's that. And then we're just going to spoon the mashed potato over the top. So you might want two spoons for that. So I'll start it here and then I'll show you when it's done. Okay, so that's mine on. I always put it on a tray because if you overfit it, then it just goes on the tray and it won't ruin the oven. But I get a fork and just run a fork over. Like so. You can always put grated cheese on it if you so choose. Okay, once that's done, I'll get a bit more fry like. I just spray the top gently with some fry light and that will help it go nice and brown. Then in the oven for about 15 minutes and away you go. Been about 20 minutes in the oven. Personally, I like it a bit crispier than that. I'd have left it another 10, 15 minutes, but the kids are hungry. What can you do? And there it is in all its glory. Hope you enjoy.